start with Maria. Coach, this was a, an interesting game in terms of one quarter to the next. You weren't quite sure what was going to happen. The threes that Jasmine Massengill hit, especially that one near the end of the third quarter, that really seemed to shift momentum back to Kentucky. Just talk about her shots and then how you guys flipped the script to close this game. You know, so proud of Jasmine. Uh, one of the things that um, she and I talked about yesterday um, is that she had to be a threat offensively. She had to see herself as a scorer. Um, even though she's a facilitator, um, she's an unbelievable passer, she pushes the tempo, but she had to see herself scoring. And I thought she stepped up um, and nailed some of the shots that she has been practicing. So uh, super proud of her. Um, and as far as uh, how we finished the game, uh, Tennessee made an unbelievable run. Uh, we talked about in the huddle, do not panic. Um, let's don't uh, settle for quick outside shots. Let's move the, uh, move the basketball, either get a layup or wide open shots, um, and we hit them. Josh Sullivan. Uh, hi, Coach. Obviously a much better effort on the boards and in points in the paint today versus the previous game. What was different today uh, from the previous game against Tennessee? I would just say mentality. Um, we came into the game, um, our bigs were very disappointed along with the, the whole team, but they really uh, took it personal. Um, they were reminded very often about the 42 paint points um, and their bigs having their way uh, pretty much every day after that. But I thought they stepped up to the challenge. They, they came, um, they were intense, uh, they were intentional on the double, and they committed to uh, getting a box out when the shot went up. Eve Burns. A couple of things on Jasmine. First off, the decision to start her. And then it really seemed, though, that even though she started, it was like towards the end of the games when she really made her impact. Yeah, um, I made a decision to start uh, Jasmine. We have several players on this team um, that could start. So that's one of the things that we talk about. Um, it's bigger than anyone. And I have to make decisions for the whole and uh, decided to start Jazz. Um, to get us settled in offensively. She understands what I'm looking for, but also a big key to that is trying to get Chastity to play more free. Um, one thing that she can undeniably do is put the ball in the basket, um, but when the ball is in her hands for 40 minutes and she's having to think, it's, it slows her um, from scoring. Um, and tonight with Jasmine on the floor, it freed her up and uh, Chastity put 21 points on the board. That Hey Coach, just a couple things on Ryan. Um, she's obviously finding ways to impact the game without scoring. Um, I was just kind of curious if, if her ankle is kind of bugging her at all, or if, if it's just kind of more of the shots just really aren't falling right now, or really what, what, what's kind of going on there? You know, I think the shots didn't fall. I thought she had some great looks that she can normally hit. Um, now she did take some off-balance shots, which we talked to her about. Um, at halftime. But the thing about basketball, some nights the shots will go, some nights um, they won't. But why I was proud of her um, is that she continued to play hard. She uh, continued to engage her teammates. She went and got rebounds. Uh, she made some unbelievable passes and got some key steals when we needed it. So she impacted uh, the game. Uh, she's a scorer. She will find her rhythm. Uh, we'll go back and put some extra shots up. She can do that. Why? Yeah, uh, Coach Elser. Uh, seemingly, um, Tennessee was very determined to keep uh, Howard from beating the, beating the night, but I, but Howard six steals, I mean seven steals and six assists, evidently played a huge role in the in the in the win winning the, the basketball game. And the second part of what I want to say was that when when you had those timeouts and you called them over, you know, when Tennessee made runs, you called timeouts. The uh, jazz. She mentioned about you. You. You wanted to keep them cool and calm, and you know, and, and not lose their head. And and I noticed that's one of the first things you said coming out. Talk about those two things, if you will. Well, when Tennessee made a run, we know, we knew that was going to happen, and that's in the game is a game of runs. Um, and so we had to answer 
uh, the run, but I didn't want us to panic offensively, which we have done uh, plenty before is you start quick shooting the ball. You want to make something happen. So we just talked about in the huddle, let, unless you have a wide open layup, let's make four or five passes and we take rhythm shots, still make the defense work. The shots that we were taking were good shots and they would go in. We just couldn't panic. Um, but I thought we answered the run. We remained uh, composed. Uh, which is a step forward in our offense. Robert O'Connell. Coach, you talked after the last Tennessee game about uh, how Ryan can affect the game when she's not making shots. What did her stat line kind of tell you about her ability to stay engaged tonight and, and really apply her energies elsewhere? That she learned from the experience. Um, in Knoxville, when her shot wasn't going in, um, you know, I challenged her about continuing to step up, be a good teammate, stay engaged in the huddle, lift someone else up and go do other things um, when your shot's not falling. So she learned from that um, and she stepped up tonight, um, as you can see on the stat sheet. Two more, John Long. Hey, Kyra, as a coach, this win has to be intensely satisfying for you. I mean, a lot of the things that you were focusing on, the defense and the paint, the weak side help, the on-ball defense, the team came through on that. Uh, how, how does that make you feel, and how much confidence does that inspire in you as the team moves forward? You know, all credit to the players. Um, they stepped up to the challenge. Um, very disappointing uh, day in Knoxville, and... Um, they wanted to come back and, and prove themselves. Um, but night in and night out, this, this league is just so tough. But what I was super proud of is the intensity in which we played. I thought we played team basketball um, on both sides. Um, but I liked the energy and I liked our focus. So that makes me proud as a coach. Just a quick comment on the zone defense. It kind of uh, changed, changed the tenor of the game there a little bit. You know, it's one thing uh, that the staff and I uh, talked about. Uh, we kind of laugh. We are all defensive coaches, and we are all accustomed to playing um, a pressure man. Um, so having to change up to a zone um, is sometimes out of my comfort zone, but knowing that we need to do that uh, to break momentum, um, but the players played aggressive out of it, but um, our ability to rebound uh, tonight was huge. Bring us home, Maria. Coach, obviously Tennessee has been disrupted twice now by, by COVID. Fortunately, they were able to get in both games with Kentucky, and I think the SEC has loaded them up. Now they get Texas A&M, Mississippi State, and South Carolina. But Renaya obviously got caught up in the quarantine protocols. When when did you know that Renaya Davis would not be able to play and 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 what difference does she make for Tennessee or basically in the SEC, it doesn't matter who lines up, you know, you're going to have a battle. Well, this conference is the best conference in the country because of it top to bottom in this league, it is going to be a battle and you're going to have to grind it out and earn um, every victory. And as far as Renaya, uh, she is one of the best um, in this conference. Um, she makes their team, uh, go. Uh, but Tennessee was tough tonight, and I thought this was a great game uh, for women's basketball. It was a, a, a great battle. Um, both teams uh, wanted to win, um, and unfortunately with COVID, it is day-to-day, uh, -day, sometimes minute-to-minute, -minute, um, and that's what we talk to our players about. You have to be resilient uh, and be able to adjust at any time. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.